Good morning. Welcome to Sunday Morning Coffee with Bridget. Today's topic is feeling good. Oh, that's all we want, isn't it? It's just to feel good. I mean, it's not like we're asking a lot. We don't want to feel great, fabulous, fantastic. We're just simply asking to feel good. Oftentimes I talk in my work with my my coaching clients and my in my sessions, I, I that the goal is first to feel better, then to feel good. Because when you feel better, you, you do better. And when you feel good, you do good. So let's start with ourselves. Let's start here. Now I know, I know, if you're in the kind of mood that I am today, you're like, yeah, yeah, okay, whatever. I could not even meditate this morning. Oh, I did. I did my mantra and I did my Deepak Chopra meditation and I was just not really connected to it. And you know what? That's okay because some days it is going to be more difficult to use some of the tools that you already have available to you. My advice is don't give up. Don't use that as an excuse not to take care of yourself or not to put your need to feel better first. So if our goal then isn't to feel good right out of the gate, but simply to feel better than we feel at the moment that we wake up or feel better at the moment that we notice we're not feeling so great, where do we start then? What do we, what do we even do for our first step? Well, for me, I have a good angel friend, Archangel Michael, who's been with me since the early, early days of my psychic awakening and awareness. And I wish I could say that, oh, I instantly ask my angels to come in and help me, and they do, and everything is all better. No, that's not usually the case. Usually, they're just kind of part of the background, and I don't really notice or think of calling them in. But today, this morning, I feel the energy of Archangel Michael present, and I'm going to share that with you. You might be saying, well, Bridget, why? Why would Archangel Michael be present for you? As though that should be an area of concern or cause for concern. Oh, no, not at all. It just simply means I'm in a place of recognizing at a subconscious level. My spirit recognizes that I need additional help today. It's not that anything horrible happened or I'm dealing with anything massive. Nothing different than the norm, oh, than anybody else has been dealing with the last few months. I'm not all that unique or special in that regard. So no, he's not rushing in because there's a pending doom or tragedy on the horizon. Not at all. In fact, archangels get often taken in a bad rap because of that. I think people, it's easy to kind of presume that angels only come when there's dire circumstances. But I can assure you, they're always here, whether you acknowledge them or not. And you don't have to be psychic to ignore them either. Let's just be clear on that. All right, so Archangel Michael and helping to feel better today. What is the guidance or wisdom that you have? So he stands before me in his beautiful blue glow. He oftentimes shows up blue. The shade or the hue of blue, the gradient in the color does vary based on the client or the person I'm talking to. For me today, he's kind of a neutral blue, kind of a country blue for you children of the 80s. <laughs> did, you guys have, did you guys have moms or grandmas that had the kitchens with like the geese in it, with that country blue and maybe mauve in the bathroom? You know what I'm talking about, right? That country blue? You know exactly what I mean when I say country blue, right? Yeah, that might have been like late 80s, early 90s, but you all get my drift. And for those of you who don't, it was funny for those of us who did so his aura is that color and sometimes it shows up a bit gold he doesn't show up gold today he's not like in this major powerful place it's not like I'm in the depths of despair or really depressed or anything like that I just would like to feel better and for all of us collectively I ask hey Michael how do we feel better as I reach for my cup of coffee this is Sunday morning coffee after all hmm Look at your cup, he says. As I turn it around, it's black on one side. It's a small cup. 
In fact, I was kind of annoyed at how small it was, let's be honest, because I want abundance in my coffee in the morning. So I turn it around and the side that faces me now is the side with the applique on it. The side with the print and the pattern, which is a purple, rain, a purple umbrella. Underneath the umbrella is a peace sign on the left side and on the right side is a big purple heart. The mug is black and in the center of the umbrella are the letters P R D. PRD stands for Purple Rain Drops. Purple Rain Drops is a term that was used in a community that I facilitated shortly after Prince made his transition into the afterlife. And if you know my story or if you watch my YouTube channel, Above Life channel, you know that he was part of what led to the creation of that particular YouTube channel. Although, let's be clear, my friends, for years I had another YouTube channel that nobody really noticed, Fairy Grasshopper, which means magical student, which is now a vlog space for all things psychic and interesting life stories that I choose to share in addition to card readings. But he tells me, so to turn around, look at your mug, look, look, look at it. So I'm turning it around and I'm noticing this and it is poignant. Because right now, today, and I didn't even really think about this when I poured my coffee in this mug this morning, but today I'm recording this session during the time that is considered the transition, the energy bridge for when Prince actually made his transition into the afterlife four years ago. In fact, this may be Sunday morning coffee for you all, but for me, I'm recording it on Tuesday, April 21st, 2020, which is the four years after Prince's death. Gee, I wonder if that's why my allergies are bad today, hmm? Noticing consistently clearing my throat, clearing that throat chakra, that communication bridge, which incidentally is also that beautiful country blue kind of color little bit of green maybe mixed in there. So hello, throat chakra, communication center. And grief. There's a collective grief that's here. But it's not just connected to the people who were Prince fans or people who miss Prince in the afterlife. This is four years later, right? This is connected to the common grief process that we are experiencing here now on our planet. During April of 2020, regardless of when you listen to this, this is a time of staying at home orders and limited social interaction because of the illness and the health crisis that the world is actually facing. And so in order to help keep people healthy for a longer period of time and to spread out the, the danger, especially for people who are immune compromised, it has uh, been a different, very different time, a unique time, and one that has caused for lots of adjustment and created lots of opportunities to ask the question, how, Michael, how do I feel better? How do I feel better? I would like to feel better today. Not that we've been in a depression, constant state of depression or sadness. It's not, it hasn't been that. It's been ups and downs and different, and some days like normal days. So here today, recognizing that there is a grief here. So the desire to feel better is natural. It is a human need to feel better. To feel good is a human need. To feel good is a human desire. Okay, is it a need or desire? Look at the mug. He literally points me right back at the mug. Like focus your attention. He literally kind of tilts my head down so that I'm looking back again on the mug. Need, desire. There's a peace symbol and a heart, so love. So peace and love, need and desire. Do we need love and desire peace or we desire love and need peace? Interesting. You guys, I'm going to give that to you as... Uh, opportunity for journaling to go deeper. I love to do that, by the way. Journal prompts are one of my fave things. 
opportunity to go deeper. Here's a question you can ponder for yourself. Do I need peace and desire love? Or do I desire peace and need love? Interesting question. Not that you're going to have an ultimate answer to this, but the fact that you can connect with these two concepts and ask yourself these deeper questions might actually help you to feel better because some of the resistance or the pressure that you feel, the grief that you feel is is wrapping around the desire and, and the need for peace and the desire and the need for love because grief comes from love. It's the absence of love. And so that state of grief is oftentimes a fill-in space that we don't necessarily, uh, how do I say this? We don't necessarily realize that we're holding, we're trying to hold on to the love of that particular person or that part of our lives or that situation, whether it was a marriage, a job, a house, or a, a loved one, a person. But grief fills in the space of love and it feels as though grief and love almost mix together so much that they get almost confused that the reason why you feel the loss is because you felt the love so much and if you stop feeling the loss, you stop feeling the grief, you stop feeling not great, then you lose the connection to the love that you had. But that's the past. Love transcends and it becomes new and it creates new opportunities for connections, new opportunities to feel better, to feel good. But that happens after the grief has lightened up. And the grief doesn't actually ever really totally go away. I can tell you that for a fact because after the death of my father too, I I know it never really fully goes away because sometimes you, I mean, you recognize the absence of the human body of the person and the role they played, but you don't, but for, well, for me at least, I don't feel the absence in the same way. It's different. We have a different relationship now. It's not like a human relationship, but I know that my dad, for example, is around. I mean, I just know that his energy is is connected to my energy in some way and I don't talk to him constantly and I haven't talked to him for probably a very long time because I haven't needed to because I feel it and the reason why I can feel it is because the grief has lightened up enough where I can connect to just the pure love part of him this is why when people pass by the way when people die and then um, other people kind of idolize them or memorialize them in a way that's um, only focusing on the good of that person it's almost like this hero complex of that person even though the person could have been a total jerk at times, you only focus on the good. It's, it's really because that's the only part that you can actually feel. It's not about being in denial of the person or rewriting history. It's actually about you recognizing the connection to the spirit of that person and your spirit connecting to that person's spirit as well. And that's all you, you know in spirit. All you know is the goodness, the love, the hope, the light, the good stuff. So... Wow, okay, that was kind of a deeper conversation than I expected. I just wanted to feel better. So do I feel better? Hmm. Let's have another sip of coffee. Oh, I'll decide. I'll think about it and let you know. Hmm. Knowing that Archangel Michael is present for us today should certainly help us to feel better. Knowing that there's archangel energy that's supporting us and loving us. I do feel kind of tired today. My physical body feels tired and I feel like it's an energetic thing. Definitely an energetic thing. Lucky for me, I don't have a busy or super full day today. So I have the opportunity to just kind of take care of myself, which is something that you may want to consider as well. What are ways that you could actually take care of yourself today? Not push yourself, not force yourself, not have expectations of yourself that are not realistic. If you don't feel great, you can't go run. You know, you're going to go run three miles if you don't feel great. So maybe simply, you know, filling up a little tubby with water and having a foot bath. Maybe that would be a way that you can care for yourself listening to some gentle music, using your essential oils, you know, spraying some lavender. Hey, thanks for that nod to Prince. Or some rose essential oil or spray. 
Maybe lighting a candle. I have a candle lit right now. It's a really cool candle. It's got like a soy, it's a soy candle with essential oils and it's got this like wooden wick. And so it kind of makes this crackle noise and I love it. I don't think you can hear it on the microphone, but I, I really love it. <sighs> Simple things like that help to feel better. Little choices that we can make for ourselves like that, like lighting that candle or choosing that oil or drawing warm water for a foot bath, as simple as that. Choosing some hot water or tea instead of coffee, that might be a good way to feel better. <laughs> Treating yourself like a grandma would treat you, a nurturing, sweet grandma, like that. Hmm. Ah, so this is Bridget. It's my pleasure to connect with you today here on Sunday morning coffee. It is my desire to connect with you, to inspire you and encourage you, but also to connect with you in a very authentic and real way. So this idea of feeling better, this goal to feel better is totally attainable. It's very realistic. Let's set it as an intention as you step into your day. Grab your journal, get a warm cup of coffee or tea perhaps, and start your day off by connecting. Thanks so much for listening. Remember Archangel Michael is helping to guide you through the day today. And a big shout out, a big hug. How about a purple hug to my friends who are Prince fans, my PRDs, the Purple Raindrops. Thank you everyone for listening today. I hope that your spirit is a bit more inspired and that your cup of hope is filled up just a tad bit more. Thanks for listening. <laughs>